When we began this effort to bring Corky home, we imagined bringing her to a place where she would stay temporarily and be fed and looked after and learn how to catch live fish again and then ultimately rejoin her family group. I was working at the Vancouver Aquarium. The aquarium, of course, was very early on uh, involved in the captive industry. And I was hired, I guess, as a scientist to, I don't know, legitimize what was going on. Then in 1969, I went up to Pender Harbor where the captures had taken place. And there were a group of orcas that were surrounded by nets. Corky was involved in that capture. I saw Corky taken away in slings out of the water and put on the back of trucks. Corky ultimately was flown to Los Angeles and taken to a place called Marine Land of the Pacific. The capture really provoked my interest in orcas in the wild. I wanted to know more about them. And we landed here in June 1970 with a small group of people a kind of little expedition, I guess. Nearby there was a cliff we could observe from, and there was enough deep water we could put a hydrophone in. We built a little treehouse. We put a bunch of equipment that we used to monitor the hydrophone, and we started watching from the shore. That's how we found this place. It didn't take too long for us to realize that we were actually seeing the same individuals. We started to understand that these whales lived in groups, and then there was the A5 pod, and the A5 pod included Corky's mum. If you go back to Pender Harbor, at that capture, a number of the whales were taken and some were released. Among the whales released was Corky's mum. So she continued to have babies. And in fact, two of her offspring are here right now, here, and literally today. We have a really long continuity since that time in the 1970s of being able to follow Corky's family. She's been in captivity for most of her life. She's probably 51 years old now. And for 47 of those years, she's been away from the ocean and in a tank. So what we have been working with is the idea of a retirement facility. And there's in fact a perfect place just around the corner from us in which there's a bay that has some little islands at the front of it which could be blocked off and barriers created that would prevent her from getting out. But it's also directly accessible to Blackfish Sound where her family often comes. So she'd have an opportunity there, we think, to at least communicate acoustically with her family. There are the calls, there's the dialects, there's the language, if you will, that is still common between them. And there's Fife and Ripple, right, who are exactly. offspring of her mother. So That's right, her brother and sister. Right. So when they call, she'll hear them. She'll hear them. There's no question that Corky will recognize the sounds made by the A5 pod. When we were very actively campaigning for Corky in the 90s, it was a film crew from Primetime Live. We gave them a tape recording of Corky's part, and they took it to SeaWorld and played the sounds of Corky's family to her. And it was no question about her reaction. Her whole body started to shake when she heard the sounds of her family. It was a profound moment. And you can see how large this space is. It has a, a significant water depths, but it also has very far reaches and shallow depths and muddy bottom and so forth. I think it's vital that this move for Corky happens soon. For one thing, she's the oldest orca in captivity, so we don't know how long she's going to live. We don't know how long it's going to be before she takes her last breath and drops to the bottom of that tank in SeaWorld. It could happen any time. There's a real urgency to doing this soon, now, really. And I think we have a real opportunity in Double Bay. The owners are willing, even enthusiastic, about it being used as a retirement home for Corky. All we need is SeaWorld's nod, and it could happen. SeaWorld's in such trouble at this point, in terms of numbers, stock market, all of those things that make a business thrive are obstacles for SeaWorld at this point. And I just think that if they get actively involved in bringing Corky home and delight people around the world in what they're doing, their, their fortunes will rise. If I could sit down with Joel Manby, I would say to him that he has a fantastic opportunity to do something right after all these years of doing things that are actually quite bad for orcas. SeaWorld's got a real chance to do something great, wonderful for one of them. 
I feel optimistic, mostly because public perceptions have changed so much. It's literally impossible for the captive industry to continue indefinitely in the way that it has. These are captive orcas. They have families in the wild that they come from. They are totally deprived of the most important element of their perceptual life, which is sound. They are involved in a shabby business that exists solely to make money. I think what I'd like to say about Corky is that she's alive, she's still alive, so she still has a chance. And I just think that SeaWorld should give her that chance and that she should come home.